thing. It interferes with me. Were you trying to sabotage that message because you really secretly are upset because of Michael Landon? Hey, let me tell you, I literally destroyed nine seasons of DVDs a year and a half ago. And if that wasn't bad enough, when Brother Andrew moved, I had the, I, I, I had the, the privilege of going back out there and helping him with a tarp full of those CDs, and most of them were mine. Okay? So we spilled half of them. Were you there, Samuel, that day? Me and you and Luke, was it, was it us, man? Yeah. And we, we, we picked all those CDs up because they were on that tarp, and we folded them all, we moved them out of there. So I was another reminder of my idolatry. So <laughs> my former idolatry. So listen, I, when, I, when I say these things, I'm not saying them out of perfection that I have never sinned or, or, or wasn't fooled or duped or, or in that. I'm saying it from repentance. Amen? From a heart that repented of these things. And these things are real, and they seduce the people of God, and, and we should have no fellowship with them. Really, we shouldn't. As servants, you know, I, there's, I, I've seen some, some things out there that, you know, it's, it's really sad. Some of these hardcore street preachers, I've seen some things from their videos online, and then what some of them are involved with, and I'm just shocked by it, to be honest with you. Um, you know who I'm talking about, but uh, the guys that I... But All right, turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 6. Uh, listen, we'll have lunch afterwards here. Uh, Brother Aaron, if you could, it's 1138. Um, I'm gonna, I, I, I don't know how far I'm going to get into this. I might stop it when 45 minutes in like I did last week or attempted to anyway and finish it up in the afternoon. I'm not sure yet. How, I don't know how long this is going to take. Uh, I want to develop this and I want to take my time to develop it. And, and kind of work through it to explain as much of it as I can to you. Um, and hopefully, um, hopefully, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can explain this well enough. Uh, and I've really been burdened over this, uh, that this would make sense to you and it would understa you would understand it. Um, some, of you, some of you do not come from a world that I'm going to discuss here today. Uh, what I mean by that is you've never been influenced by this. Now, see, I grew up listening to this music, all right? I grew up listening to it, and our culture and subculture has been developed from this music, okay? This, th th this, this music has shaped our entire nation right now. Every commercial just about that you, that you would watch if you still watch television, um, every ad, everything on, on Facebook, on wherever you're at on the Internet, all of these things are movies and, and uh, radio stations and everything, clothing, everything has been modeled after this, this culture at this present time that we're in. But why? How does it have so much power? Is it simply just the power of persuasion? No. If it were that simple, then it would be easy just to talk people out of that and try to reason with some of them. But it's more than the power of persuasion. There is a spirit behind this. There are spirits, I should say, behind this. And uh, you need to understand that so you can better deal with some of these people and explain to them what they're into. I mean, those college kids yesterday, those kids that were downtown, those kids that I discussed, same culture, influenced by the same music. Listen to it. And, and they're influenced by it. Well, this message is called Hip Hop and Rock Stars and the Nephilim. Now, I'm using the Nephilim just as a term. I understand that's not a King James term. I understand that that's, a, that's, a, that, that's not, but, but also I'm not reading that into the text, okay? Um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, read what the Bible says here, all right, about it, but I'm just using that term because it's a popular term that people understand that have studied any of these things, they get it, okay? They get that term. So that's why I'm using it as, as in this case. But in Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 4, the Bible says this, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made 
man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Then Luke chapter 17, verse number 26 tells us, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless us. Lord, please give us clarity, understanding in this as we discuss some of these dark things, Lord. And we understand just what people are hooked on, Lord, what they're stuck into and why they are. Help us now, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We see Genesis chapter 6 covers when the sons of God, okay, which were angels, all right, study the sons of God all the way through the Old Testament. You will find, all the way through the Bible, you will find what they are. Now, the Bible says we become the sons of God when we're saved. Uh, that is because we were created by God, okay? We, are, we have the new birth from above, from heaven, okay? We're born again. We're regened, right? Regenerated, regened, same word, from above, okay? From born again, all right, from the Spirit, all right? So we are regened from above. These today want to search out for the genetic modification is very popular today. Uh, transhumanism, very popular today. On the rise, uh, that merging together, that messing with the DNA, all of those things, very popular today. We're hearing it everywhere. And most Christians have their eyes shut and their ears closed, and they don't have a clue what's going on around them. But God has sent some men to preach loudly and clearly and show the truth of these matters. Now, Genesis chapter 6, what was he talking about when he said the sons of God came into the daughters of men? We understand that. We've covered that. Sons of God, fallen angels that left their first estate, the Bible tells us. The book of Jude tells us that they left their first estate. Peter talks about it. Okay. What happened to these that left their first estate? Well, they came into the daughters of men, they, they, and they were men of renown, men of old. So it says that's the children they produced, men of renown, men of old. They were giants, all right? And they were called men of renown, men of old. Incidentally, inc incidentally, in, um, in witchcraft and in other things, we see, in witchcraft and other things, we see that uh, they they call up spirits, okay? They call spirits, and what do they call? They, they look for an old one. They call, in witchcraft, they call it an old one. What are they talking about? An old spirit. One of the old, one of the aged ones, one of the old ones. So they use that same terminology, okay? Because they want to, they want to, they want to get the power of one of those old ones. So what does this have to do? It, it has a lot to do with it. Just hang on. Okay, we're going to break it down. We're going to use their own words. So you're going to see that this is this is nothing more than a satanic plot. This is nothing more than the devil's kingdom working. All right? And the devil's kingdom has always been popular with the world. In case you didn't realize that, <laughs> the world, Satan is the god of this world. So the Bible says he's the god of this world, so he controls it as of right now. Um you know, he governs it in his way, so to speak. Now, God is above all. Amen. Um, all right. But anyway, so, so, so this is what they did. We understand that the, these, these, uh, these angels that left their first estate, they're in a holding cell, the Bible says. They're in uh, what some call Tartarus, okay? They're in a holding cell in hell, all right, waiting for the day of judgment. Well, God doesn't just hold somebody, all right? without charging them, he's not like the United States government, all right? He, he, he's a just God, so what are they being held on? Well, the Bible says that he charged them with lewdness. Okay, that was sons of God, daughters of men, uh, going after strange flesh, the Bible says. They did this, they would, at, at, just as Sodom and Gomorrah, and they went after strange flesh, same thing. That was strange flesh. They went after the women of the earth, and they merged, and they had these giants, which were of old. Now, what happened to these giants? Well, you know, they're 20 to 30 foot tall, some, so they found 30 foot tall skeletons. And what happened? They drowned. They drowned. There's people that don't believe that, by the way. But the Bible says giants. I believe what the Bible says. 
I hope you believe the Bible. If you don't, just rip that page out then. Might as well rip out a few other ones too. Amen? Anyway, they found them. They found the skeletons. They're all over the place. But you know who wants to hide those skeletons? The Vatican and the Smithsonian. Why do they want to hide those? Well, because an evolution would not be true. By the way, I've got, I've got two books at home that document the fact that these government agents go around to all of these places where these, these skeletons were found. And somebody called the Smithsonian. Gone. Never to see that skeleton again. Gone. Why? Because they don't want you to know about it. Why? Because it proves the Bible. The Bible said there were giants in the earth in those days. Oh, come on. They, they were just like, like, you know, tall guys, right? No, it says giants. That's what it says. You either believe God or you don't. If you, if you have a hard stretch of imagination to believe that God, that there were giants in the earth in those days and they found 30-foot skeletons, how will you believe that the Son of God came, was born of a virgin, lived a perfect sinless life, died on the cross for our sins, and rose again for our justification? Excuse me, that's a miracle. A lot bigger miracle than having some big boys running around. That God would tabernacle in the flesh. Amen? By the way, there's always been somebody that wants to mimic that and challenge that story. And who is that? That's Satan's kingdom. In comes Genesis chapter 6. Sons of God, daughters of men. What do they want to do? Pervert the story. In comes what? Egypt. Ceramus. Right? The story of Isis, Osiris, Ceramus, right? What was that? Same story. To merge him through. A perversion of the story of of Jesus who was to come. Why? Because that was Satan's always, the plan was always to pervert the seed. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15. I will put enmity between thy seed and her seed. Wait a minute, women don't have seed. Who is the seed of the woman? Christ. Paid attention? Mm -hmm. Women don't have seed. Christ was the seed of the woman. What's the enemy? The war. There will always be the war. The mystery of iniquity versus the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Mystery of iniquity. Satan's seed. He has a seed? Yes, he does. Antichrist. Oh, come on. You either believe it or you don't. It says it. I didn't make the words up. Words have meanings. All through the scriptures, they have meanings. You can't divorce it just because you don't like it. Well, I don't like what that says. Well, psh, tough. I didn't write it. I just believe what God says about it. That's all. Amen? I just believe what he says. So what happened to these giants? They drowned. Waters came up. They drowned. Where'd their spirits go? Well, according to Isaiah and a few other places, they sure didn't go to hell. I believe they're here until the day of judgment. That's why you have demons running around. That's why you have what we call demons and devils running around. You have these entities running around. They have great power that they give people. Oh, come on. That's just fantasy stuff, preacher, isn't it? No, it's not. What do the scriptures say? It says in the day, just like when the, when the Son of Man comes, it'll be just like the days of Noah. What was happening? They were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. What marriage and who are they? Well, I hate to break it to you, but ever since the beginning of time, people have been getting married. You realize that, right? Ever since God ordained marriage, people have been getting married. So that's nothing new. What's he discussing there? Just like in the days of Noah, what was happening? Have you ever noticed something? I'm going to cover this at the end a little bit. Have you ever noticed the eerie thing? Now, some of you don't have your ear to the ground of things and don't get it, but let me explain something to you, okay? There's a lot of talk today about God is my boyfriend. You ever even hear a lot of that talk? All that? No, I never heard that. Okay, well, Jack Scott is in prison right now, and he was a Baptist that decided he was going to preach that uh, there was a, some sort of a physical union with the Lord's Supper. The God is my boyfriend thing. Creflo Dollar, same thing, same message. I think there's, an, I mean, there, there's so many others that are speaking. What are they talking about? They're talking about a spiritual marriage. And they keep pushing it. And, and they are consumed with it. 
Freemasonry, consumed with it. Transgenderism is consumed. Trying to find the perfect man, trying to make the perfect man. Kabbalism, full of it. Yoga. Go up the levels, all the way up. It's transhumanism. It's trying to create, it's alchemy. It's trying to bring the final one that's to come, the Antichrist. Why? Because that is the war of the ages, my friend. That is the war that has been raging since Satan's rebellion. It's a battle. And just like in the days of Noah, we're seeing it today. We're seeing, we're starting to see these, these strange manifestations, these strange ideas of marrying spirits. Hey, listen, folks, there, there are so many people out there that believe they're married to dead people. I can give you a picture, picture of people that say they're married to a spirit. Yeah, that spirit comes to me at night. I believe it. Mm -hmm. I've heard testimonies of it. And these people aren't just crazy. Mm -hmm. Happens. Why? Because they're engaging a spirit world. That's why. So these devils, they roamed around, right? They roamed around everywhere because they have no bodies now. So they are spirits that roam around always looking for a body. Now you can imagine that these people, these, these giants that roam the earth. Well, first of all, let's just look, let, let's look at this first. I'll get to that in a second here. You say, preacher, do you believe the sons of God will come back again, the daughter? You think that'll happen again? No, I don't think they have to come back to do that. I think they have spirit entities that are roaming around that are going to do it for them, that are producing the same results. So no other angels have to do that again. By the way, God, God already damned that down to hell, and those are, are they're, they're enslaved. I don't believe they'll try it again. They don't have to. They have spirits already roaming that do it. That interact with people. Unless, of course, you believe that there aren't any real spirits and you're like some of these, uh, uh, who are these people, uh, the, the preterists and those, oh, Satan's bound. He's, he's bound for like a thousand years. He's still bound. <laughs> really? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, all these spirits are bound. They're not doing nothing. It's just, you know, it's just man. Oh, okay. <sighs> wow. You people need to get out more. Um, you might be locked in a closet somewhere too much. We better let you out and walk around a little bit. What are these looking for? They're looking for bodies to inhabit. Preacher, where do you get that from? Turn to Mark chapter 5. I want to show you these. Mark chapter 5. The Bible says this in verse number 3, Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Okay, so here's a man, the maniac Gadar. Here's a man that, uh, that had chains, and he broke those chains. I mean, he splintered them like they were nothing. Can you do that? How many men do you know that you can bind with chains, and they can just break them like... <sighs> that ain't happening, is it? How are they doing that? Because he was possessed. Now, it would make sense if he had the spirit of a 30-foot tall person in him. Right? That makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, because, I mean, some of you guys are probably strong. But if you were looking up at a 30-foot tall man, you see... Acts chapter 16, verse number 16. And it came to pass as he went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by Sue saying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. What was she doing? She was giving them enlightenment. She was being paid. There was a spirit inside of her that was being paid to what? To give enlightenment, to give information, to give knowledge. Okay, and they were paying that girl to do that. Why? Because devils have the power to give knowledge and give, give dark things even and, under, and understanding of different things. They have that power to do that because they are of old. When you've been around for 6,000 years, you, you can you kind of understand the way things work. Right? 
Unless, of course, you believe that devil possession isn't real and that's not real in your Bible. But when you preach enough on the streets, you'll figure out devil possession is real. It's not abstract for us. We see it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not abstract. What did Satan say? He said that your eyes would be opened. He said, if you take of this fruit, your eyes will be opened. What was he saying? You'll have enlightenment, and you'll be as gods. Well, what he's really talking about, I believe, was that third eye of enlightenment that he wanted to open them up to and give them understanding, which all the cults talk about, the Pentecostals and the Charismatics push it. Everybody pushes it. See the sermon on charismatic movement um, and slain in the spirit or the radio show I did on that if you have a question about that. But they, they all push that pineal gland, that third eye opening up, and they all have the all-seeing eye in different things. Cults have it. All of the, they, they're, Why? Because they're of their mother. That's why. And they all have the same thing. So what happened? What happened, to the, what happened after the flood? What happened to these spirits? Where did they go? Babylon. They built the Tower of Babylon. What did they have to do? Well, I can't be a 30-foot tall giant anymore if I don't have a body. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go somewhere where I can be worshipped because I crave worship. So where are you going to go? You're going to go inhabit a body of somebody that's a great leader and make him an even better one and make him an offer they can't refuse. Because they already rebel against God and they hate God anyway. So I might as well go with them. So in comes Nimrod. What was Nimrod building? The first Freemason. What did Nimrod build? Built a tower. Whose height would what? Reach heaven. Well, what did he want to do that before? Well, because the spirit inside him was telling him, hey, listen, you could, you could be a kingdom. You're going to run the world. You're going to run everything in this world. And you can build a tower. You don't need God to get to heaven. You can go back to heaven. Isn't that the goal? No, I preach. I don't know. What are you talking about? I don't know. Open up your wallet and pull out a dollar bill. Tell me about... 13 steps. Tell me about the all-seeing eye on the top of the capstone, or which is the capstone at the top there, the all-seeing eye. Why is the story of Osiris, Isis, and Nimrod, why, why is the story on our dollar bill? Why is the great seal there? Why is that there? Why? Because these spirits seek out people that seek them out and that want power and enlightenment and rule mankind, and they find them. And what do they do with them? They make them great men, mighty men of old, men of renown. Right? And because they crave this power, these spirits work in them. You say, what does this have to do with hip-hop music? I'm getting there. I'm trying to get you to understand it, okay? I know you don't think I'm going somewhere, but I promise you I am. When you get to this point, basically, so the, all these world leaders, all these famous people, people want to be famous, right? So what do they do? Well, just like in the days of Noah, or just like in the days of Nimrod and in Noah's time and all of that, the same thing is happening now. Well, who do we see now that wants to be famous and have power? World leaders, rock stars, rap stars, hip-hop stars, Hollywood stars? Well, yeah, yeah some pastors, yeah. <laughs> but uh, sadly, <laughs> I was trying to leave that one out. <laughs> anyway, the, they, they rise to power. How? Well, Whenever somebody is dealing with something like the occult, they don't normally hide it. They usually advertise it. You just don't understand the advertisement. If you understood the advertisement, then you probably wouldn't buy it. But some people don't understand the advertisement of it. So there's a group of people called stars out there that are taking those devils up on their offer to give them enlightenment. And many of them, they take them up on world leaders, Franklin Roosevelt, 
the great seal, Manly P. Hall, all these people that worked together that were famous Masons and others that worked together to be big. I mean, let's face it. Franklin D. Roosevelt was one of the, one of the most popular presidents. And he was a downright, dirty, devilish, rotten dog. Amen! Exactly what he was. He was a Satanist. He's a Luciferian, more, more appropriately. A Luciferian. There's a difference, by the way. One worships Satan as a brute beast. The other as the enlightened one. Just like you'll see a video that I'm going to put on Facebook here today of a wicked man, of a wicked man, that I talk to that, that, that they're after Lucifer's enlightenment. They, they don't, nah, they don't like Satan. They like Lucifer because he gives the enlightenment. Real stuff, folks. Only they don't need the angels that left their first estate. They've got these spirits now that work and give the enlightenment. Just like we hear things about like the Illuminati, the enlightened ones, the 13 families. The devils of Rome, the Jesuits, and all of them, they are a supposed superior race of enlightened men. What are they? They're 13 families of enlightened beings, enlightened people that have opened up that third eye of enlightenment. And they have Luciferian knowledge. Knowledge. What did, what did Daniel say? Knowledge. Seal up the book. Knowledge shall run to and fro in the end. Knowledge. All right. Well, now, how does this make any sense? All right. Let's bring it down here a little bit so we can understand it. That took a little while. But uh, in comes a man named Aleister Crowley. Okay. Now, many of you don't know who Aleister Crowley is. Some of you do because I've preached a few sermons and I've included Aleister Crowley in that so you can understand. If you don't know who Crowley is... You're missing a big piece of the puzzle in understanding how this all formed. See, you thought that just people just played music. It was popular. People just liked it. They became superstars. They became rich. And their rebellion to God, their hate for Jesus Christ, their hate for the Word of God is just a natural thing. has nothing to do with a spirit world, of course. Couldn't have anything to do that. It's just the, 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 the depravity of man. That's all that it is. Oh, no, it's part of it. The depravity of man is definitely part of it. But it's not all of it. It's because there's a spirit that worketh in those children of disobedience. It's because they are enlightened. And a man that specialized in that was a man named Aleister Crowley. He prided himself on being 666, the beast. Prided himself on that. I had a man tell me yesterday he was chanting while my dad was preaching, and I was standing next to him, he was chanting 666. I looked at him and I said, you're a Satan worshiper. You need to repent, you wicked sinner. What do you want me to do, whisper sweet nothings in his ear? As he exalts his Lord, I'll exalt mine. Amen. I know. Most Christians, we just need to go back in the corner and let the spirits just roam, right? Not say anything. Those old wicked devils are under my feet. Aleister Crowley's form of magic. Why do these men desire to be stars and shine above all others? I find it fascinating, though, that word star is used in the Bible that talks about the sons of God, talks about angels as well. It was used of angelic beings when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. That's an interesting reference to study. I realize that would technically be their fathers, but I find it interesting anyway that that would be used. And then we have this famous stars, and the first star ever died by poisoning herself. The way of the transgressor is hard, like we talked about. Well, anyway, because most of them are possessed by these gods. Why are they worshipped? Why are these rock stars worshipped as gods? Why are these rap stars worshipped as gods? Some of them call themselves gods. I'm going to show you that, too. I had somebody tell me yesterday, oh, they don't really believe that. They're just playing around. That's not real. No, they really believe it. <laughs> they, they really, really believe it. And they do really have power through those spirits to do things. Mm -hmm. It's not phony. It's real. 
These men will sell their souls for their music to be famous. They will sell their souls. DMX said it in his writing. He said it's a small price to pay for fame. He said, I sold my soul to the devil. It's a small price to pay for fame. What's in it for the spirits? What's in it for them to inhabit these people? What's in it for them? These spirits or demons, get, they get worshipped like they did when they were in their flesh. When, I mean, picture it on earth during the, time, the days of Noah when there's hybrids, there's all these weird things going on, and here's a 30-foot tall man that, walk, man that walks up to you. I mean, you're thinking, man, this guy must be God. I mean, he is huge. The Bible says all flesh had corrupted itself before God. The Bible said it was a mess. Noah was the only man who was clean. Doesn't mean he was sinless. It says he was perfect in his generations. That's crazy talk. No, it's not. It's Bible talk. <laughs> Study the word generations. Not hard to understand. Genesis is the book of generations. Okay? That's what it is. The beginnings. So, what happened here? is they saw these 30-foot tall men back then, and hey, man, these guys got worshipped. Everybody loved them. I mean, everybody that wasn't running from them. But, <laughs> but I mean, they worshipped them like they were gods. What do we see in Greek mythology? What do we see in, the, in Roman mythology and all the mythologies? What do we see about them? We see them, big, tall, huge men, worship giants, worshipped as gods. They were the powerful ones. They were the mighty ones. It's all over history. Another perversion of the truth. But they desire that same worship today. Think about this. A stadium full of 15,000 people worshiping you. The host that you're in, they're, they're worshiping you. While they're, 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 they're light and lighters waving, following your every command that you give. Crowd surfing. Women disrobing themselves for you. All, all the people up there worshiping you and following you and idolizing you and bowing down to you. And they make their covenant with death and their agreement with hell. So what does this have to do with this man? Aleister Crowley taught how to channel these spirits for fame and fortune and to get what you want to be famous. In Crowley's book, 777, he prided himself on being the most wicked man on earth, ever. Prided himself. His mother called him the beast because I mean, he disgusted her. By the way, Crowley was trained by Plymouth Brethren when he was a little boy. He rejected it. In Crowley's book, 777, he taught someone how they could get power and tap into the old ancient one. How to go get an old ancient one to be famous and to be powerful. How do I get that? To summon that spirit in you and to use that power of the enlightened one to be famous and have people follow you. Here's what he said. Let him train himself to think backwards by external means. Let him write backwards, walk backwards, listen to the phonograph backwards. They didn't have record player. I mean, they didn't have what we have now, obviously. Listen to the phonograph backwards, speak backwards, and read backwards. For the highest spiritual working, one must accordingly choose the victim, which contains the greatest and purest force, a male child of perfect innocence and high intelligence. See, Crowley taught that if you're going to have this power and this spirit's going to come to you, there has to be a sacrifice. See, that's how the devil works. Do you understand? That's how the devil works. There has to be a sacrifice. Now, that's the opposite of free grace, isn't it? See how the devil works? The devil has what's called that harlot love, doesn't he? It always comes with a price. Jesus paid the price for ours. You can be regened. You can be born again from above. You can have the new nature by faith in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. But the devil wants a sacrifice. So what does he say? He says, choose the innocent life and steal their purity from them. 
I'm not going to go any deeper than that, but that's deep enough. But you understand what I'm saying. Steal their purity. That unlocks the spirits and allows them to be able to inhabit you and to use that power. And they have to continually do those same things in order to continually have that power. In other words, that would evoke the spirit that would work for you. These stars that you see today that are practicing this have been practicing with, with Crowley's form of magic. I want you to consider something. I want you to consider Michael Jackson. Okay? Michael Jackson, who had a habit of hanging around young boys and having sleepovers. Now, why was Michael Jackson the most famous pop artist of all time? Because Michael Jackson sought out the greatest spirits of old that he could find to inhabit him. Now, why are there, were there accusations against three boys? And why were they young boys? And why, who has a sleepover with boys? Think about it. Now put it all together. I ain't done yet, though, with Michael. Because this is going to make a lot of sense to you once you see what was going on here. Once you understand it, it'll make more sense. Will you consider the fact that he was the most powerful man in music? The most powerful performer in music. Would you consider the fact that he bought the rights to the Beatles' music? What does the Beatles have to do with anything? It has a lot to do with it. The spirit that they had. He wanted to evoke it. So what did he invoke it? So what did he do? He bought the rights to their music so he could find out how. And he pulled that spirit in. Why was Michael Jackson, was Michael Jackson's look, was his look just like, I mean, where? Did, why does he look like that? Why did Michael Jackson look so weird like that? What was his deal? Why did he look like that? I'm going to show you why he looked like that, or I'm going to tell you why he looked like that anyway. Listen, he worshipped, he was a worshiper of the goddess Sybil. And it was called Corybantis. Worshippers of the goddess Sybil, they had their hair dressed and waved like women. They were, they were heavily made up. Their faces resembling whitewashed walls. Listen in. Yeah, you know what Michael Jackson looked like? Whitewashed walls. Came out with that song, it doesn't matter if you're black or white. That's right, because we don't know what you are. They were castrated and keepers of children and infants, partaking in coming-of-age rituals and celebrations. They also practiced magic and divination to make money. They ma Listen to this. They made wild cries or high-pitched shrills while they performed their dances to the music of the pipes and the dull beat of the tambourine. When the deity entered into them and they were possessed by di divine power, they would dance uncontrollably in an ecstatic frenzy. Anybody ever seen a Michael Jackson concert? That's exactly what he did. Why? Because he followed this entity. It was part of him. It was who he was. And that's why he looked so strange and weird. That's why he looked. He said, oh, no, he just wanted, somebody said, someone once I said, he just wanted to look like Diana Ross. Because he was friends with her. No, he didn't. <laughs> it's because of this. You ever heard his high-pitched sounds that he used to make in his sermon? In his sermons. <laughs> his, his, well, they were somewhat. But uh, in his songs, you ever heard that high-pitched sound he would make? I remember when I, was a kid, when I was a kid, they did this mock one of him, and it was a Pepsi commercial when he started himself on fire, and he did that high-pitched shrill or whatever that he used to do. But he followed it completely. Why? Because he was following an entity. Say, preacher, okay, prove it. Prove it by his lyrics. Okay. I want you to listen to this. Who's it sound like he's following? 
In this, in his, in his song, "We Are the World." By the way, this this information came from G. Craig Lewis. I, I want to give him credit for this because I don't want to think I just pulled this out of thin air or something. He has a he had a he has a good video. I don't agree with him on everything, but I mean he's exposed this stuff quite a bit. He has a good series on that that really explains that. So I want to make sure people understand that I didn't just pull this out. But there's men that have worked hard on things like this. I want to give him some credit for that too. By the way, I don't want anybody thinking that that I I pulled this out of thin air or anything like that. But um, but anyway, this is part of his music. This is Michael's music, so it's it's open to everybody to, to, to look at but but he says this we are the world in this song we are the, remember that song we are the world i remember that song a bunch of goofballs gandhi up there <laughs> weird stuff anyway uh, send them your heart so they'll know that someone cares and their lives will be stronger and free as god has shown us by turning stones to bread Now, some of you ain't read your Bible, so you don't know what we're talking about. But do you remember when the temptation of Jesus Christ? Did Jesus turn stones to bread? If he would have turned stones to bread, then he would have worshipped who? And he would have fell down and worshipped him as who? Lord, God of the world, and he would not be our Savior. Well, which God is he talking about? Like that one? Oh, no, Brother Paul. <laughs> that ain't normal. How about this one? How about this one? In a song, Another Part of Me. We're taking over. We have the truth. This is the mission to see it through. Don't put your fingers. Don't point your finger. Not dangerous. This is our planet. You're one of us. Oh, that doesn't mean. We're sending out a major love, and this is our message to you. Our message to you. The planets are lining up. We're bringing brighter days. They're all lined up waiting for you. Who? Exactly. That's who they're waiting for. That's who the planets are lined up for. And that's the spirit that, those are the spirits that were in Michael. He, he went on to say that nasty in, in a song, Blame It on the Boogie. Sorry, it's goofy, I know. The nasty boogie bugs me like somebody has drugged me. Well, they have. The spellbound rhythm gets me on my feet. I changed my life completely. I seen the lightning leave me, and my baby just can't take her eyes off me. Don't blame it on sunshine. Don't blame it on moonlight. Don't on the good times. Blame it on the boogie. What's he saying there? Something else took over him, that's what. He says, the magic music moves me, that dirty rhythm grooves me, the devils got into me with his dance. The boogie's got me in a super trance. He says, the fire burns inside of me. That magic must move him, he said. He says it puts him in a super, it's, it's a fever. He says that it, it puts him in a super trance. What well, makes sense. Michael had three ways that he, that he got his music, which was quite scary, actually. Um, and G. Craig Lewis exposed this also. He said it was the giving tree. The, he would get it from the giving tree. What's the giving tree? That's the tree of knowledge. A room of mirrors. Where'd that come from? Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley said if you wanted power and you wanted an entity like that, that you go into this room of mirrors and you face all your enemies that were in there that ever did anything to you, that ever harmed you, that ever hurt you. And then you face them in that room of mirrors and you'll get power. And then dreams and spirits. Now, one thing that uh, to note is, is that Michael Jackson was being heavily sedated. The medicine that he was on that that doctor gave him before he died was medicine that was never supposed to even leave a hospital room, a hospital. It was illegal for that medicine to be traveling around. It was a high dose. Why did he, why did he keep dosing so hard? Because, then he, because he would fall into dreams and he would get his music from dreams. The spirits would come to him in dreams and then he would wake up and he would get what he wanted. 
He would get the, so what do you have to do? Well, he'd sleep for, he'd sleep for like 72 hours at a time. And eventually it wasn't long enough. And those devils were just taking him out long enough to kill him. So then he, so then he, he, he said, I need more power. So what did I do? I'm going to buy the Beatles albums. I'm going to buy the Beatles albums. And I'm going to invoke that spirit that's in there. Well, what spirit was that of? Well, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts. Go home and look it up online. Look up the picture of the album. Who's on the album? Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley. Why? Because he's the guy that gave them their power and their influence. Remember, these same Beatles are the ones that said they were more popular than Jesus and they were going to destroy Christianity. Oh, come on, preacher. They're not demonic. Just good music. That's what somebody told me on the street the other day. They said, I, they said well, you believe that Bible was written by God? I said, you, I absolutely do believe it was, yes. And, they said, and I said, you know what's funny? You don't believe this was written by God, but your music was written by devils. No. They said, you name me a band. You name me a band. I said, there's a bunch of them out there. You name. And he goes, okay, the Beatles. I said, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts, right on the cover. Aleister Crowley, right there for you to see. Oh, they didn't really believe that. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they really did. That's why they advertised for him. You think people mess around with Crowley, advertise for him. They all do. By the way, in case you wonder about Michael Jackson, another thing that G. Craig Lewis exposed on this was, was on his picture, uh, Michael had this statue built to him, right? Remember that statue he did? You remember that when he did that big statue? But on that statue is a number, 777. Seven, seven. Well, what's that? Crowley's book. By the way, another thing that G. Craig Lewis exposed here was right on his album. Who's that? That's Aleister Crowley. So you have like the, the grand witch of them all right here that he invoked more spirits you could ever imagine than anything else. And he is right there on the album there. But that's, that's not even the worst thing. The worst thing is... is there's a, a little naked boy. You can't see him. I mean, he's covered. But there's a little naked boy holding a dragon's skull. Do you, do you understand what he's saying there? He is telling you how he got his power n n from the dragon, but also from the naked boy. Got it? <laughs> Now, when everybody wonders, well, I mean, he really didn't mess with those kids, did he? Come on. You got a fruity tooty guy running around, singing like a woman, looks like one, names his kid like Blanket or Carpet or something. I don't know what he named it. Blanket, I think it was. Named his kid Blanket. Come on. Demons, that's right. That's right, demons. That's what they are. And he's showing you who he's working with. Oh, and by the way, the same picture shows the all-seeing eye. What's that show, preacher? Shows you who he's working with. That's what it shows. Shows you who is who, who is who who his, the spirit entity is and what he's doing with it. It's called Cory Bantis, so that's 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 how he worshiped, that's what he did. Uh, by the way, he also married he also married Elvis Presley's daughter. Now, I'll let you wonder why he did that. But I think you could figure it out. What was he after? There you go. That's what he was after. It's not that hard. It's, a, it's an easy connection. So why do we need to know this stuff? So you begin to understand why people are so satanically controlled by it. Now, moving on to more hip-hop artists here, so you can understand the Crowley connection. How about the king of all hip-hop right now, Jay-Z? He calls himself the god 
of rap. The God of hip hop. You know, folks, let me tell you something. Lest these things weary you, I would love to go hide out in the woods, get about 20 acres, and my flesh would love to watch the whole world go to hell and not fight any of it and try to protect my family from everything so they didn't even hear a whisper of evil. But I just can't find it anywhere in here that I'm allowed to do that. I'd love, I'd love to. I'd love to go hide out and not talk about anything. Oh, sure, it's real fun to talk. No, it's not fun to talk about it. I hate most people don't even like hearing about it. I don't like saying it. But it's real, and if you're going to engage a lost and dying world, you need to understand what they're into. So you can reprove it. Some of you think all this stuff is just human. It's just human spraying up. It has nothing to do with the devil, but it, it has more to do with the devil than you realize. It has more to do with it, and we are called to fight it. So Jay-Z says this, Lucifer, dawn of the morning, I'm going to chase you out of earth. Lucifer, Lucifer, dawn of the morning, I'm from the murder capital where we murder for capital. Lucifer, Lucifer, dawn of the morning, I'm going to chase you out of the earth. He says, Kanye, you did it again. You're a genius. Lucifer, Lucifer, dawn of the morning. For they are asking what happened to you. Lord, forgive me. He got them dark forces in him, but he also got a righteous cause for sinning. That's from his lyrics, Lucifer by Jay-Z. By the way, you say, well, why, why are you picking on him? Well, they used to hide it and backmask it, okay? They used to backmask these things in the records. You know what backmasking is? It's playing a record backwards. The most popular single of all time, Stairway to Heaven. What you think about that? Think about it forward for a second. What is he saying with Stairway to Heaven? He's building the tower, a stairway to heaven. But what does it say backwards? Praise Satan. Totally verifiable. I'm making it up. You can listen to it. I, mean, I don't recommend it, but I mean, you can, you can listen to it and hear it. Why? See, they used to do it backmasking. Crowley taught, what did Crowley teach? Backwards, 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 backwards brings power. That's why. Because it's against God. It's the falling away. It's the falling backward. See what I mean? That's where the power comes from them. That's where their satanic power comes. That's where the spirit of the Nephilim rested. The spirit of those, they rest in there to do that work, to prepare for that coming. I hope you're listening. But Jay-Z doesn't hide it anymore. Why? Because he has a clothing line. You know what it says across his shirt? Do what thou wilt. Well, so what? Nike says just do it. What's the big deal? Where do you think they got it from? Anyway, why does it say that? Because Aleister Crowley, the book of the law, that's basically the law, was Aleister Crowley's law. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Do what thou wilt. What is the spirit of rock music today? Do what thou wilt. What is the spirit of rap music? Do what thou wilt. What is the spirit of the world and the spirit of this age? And what was the spirit in the days of Noah? Do what thou wilt. Shall be the whole of the law. Crowley's book of the law. So they don't even, they don't even hide it. I, you don't have to play anything backwards anymore. Just play it forwards. It's right there. They're not hiding it. He just sells a shirt, do what thou wilt. Just like you got a shirt on about Jesus right there. Okay, why? Because you believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. So you're advertising. Amen. What is he advertising? His devil. He calls himself the God MC, Jehovah. Calls himself Jehovah. 
But preacher, shut up. Don't say nothing. Don't preach against that. Just don't stand up for your God. Hide all this stuff. Let them hide their wickedness, preacher. Don't say nothing. Somebody will get mad at you. I don't, I don't care if you get mad. I don't care who gets upset about it. I hope the devil gets upset about it. That's what I hope gets mad about it. I hope his little devils get upset about it too. And the Lord Jesus Christ will deal with them under his blood. In his lyrics called Take Over, he calls himself Jehovah. He considers himself to be the God of rap. Jay-Z's most famous counterpart, Beyonce, practices the same magic that Jay-Z does. She says this about a spirit in her. I have someone else that takes over when it's time for me to work. And when I'm on stage, this alter ego that I've created that kind of protects me who I really am. Along with her new album, Beyonce has presented her fans to a new alter ego named Sasha Fierce. Now, she said the other day that Sasha Fierce is dead. She's now merged those two, the entity together, she said, and now she has control. Well, look for somebody to die soon. Because anytime you think you control devils, you're going to die. You don't have control of devils. They have control of you. That's why it's called possession. They possess you. You don't have any control over them. Sasha Fierce is wearing a metal plate featuring prominently the face of Baphomet, who is also featured on the sigil of the Church of Satan. Anton LaVey learned everything. Anton LaVey was the founder of what? The Church of Satan. Where did Anton LaVey get all of his information from? Who did he learn from? Alistair Crowley. There is a man that has influenced more of America than you have any idea of. And I think he was paid by the government to do it. Because he was working with the CIA and he was a double agent here in America. 007. Anyway. So there's your connection. Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley is connected to Scientology. The founder of Scientology studied under Aleister Crowley and a man by the name of Jack Parsons that created the first, um, uh, the first uh, propelled rocket. He was friends with Disney as well. Didn't see that one coming. Another man, Eminem, boasted that some kids look at me like I'm a god. Why? Because there's a spirit inside of him, that's why. Apparently, this is true. So influenced are some children by Eminem's rapping that one group calling themselves the South Warren Street Kids wrote a two-page letter to George Constance, the Warren City attorney, who vowed to prosecute Eminem for his recent rash of violence. The letter made threats of firebombing city authorities with bottles filled with gas if charges against Eminem were not dropped immediately. The South Warren City Kids declared that Eminem is our Christ and that we party in his name. He also said of some of his fans, I'm fascinated by music performers. Oh, excuse me. Anyway, he said a lot about his fans. But here's another quote I want you to consider by a famous shoe designer. I'm fascinated by music performers' manipulation of the spotlight. They project an intoxicating fantasy-like energy, and they get a lot of attention in the process. I think of female rock stars as ancient goddesses, loved and worshipped by all people, which is why they're inspiration behind my new shoe collection. Zach Lowe, famous shoe designer. He's admitting it. He gets it. He understands it. Probably gets the same knowledge from them. I mean, do you really think like Apple computers and Bill Gates and these, do you, where do you think they got their knowledge from? You think just smart people, that's it? Uh-uh. Kanye West, another one, said, I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a blank deal. At least it came with a few toys like a Happy Meal. I'm spaced out, dog. I be on that moonwalk. I wonder if God asked Mike how to moonwalk. There's a few other ones here. I'm going to share a couple more, then we're done here. I just want to show you this. A couple more. Let me see here. Me a second here.
Now, there's, a, there's, a, there's another popular one named Rihanna. She's very popular among people today, among the, among the kids today. They, they, they listen to her music and everything. She has a song called Disturbia. She says, it's a thief in the night to come and grab you. It can creep up inside you and consume you. A disease of the mind, it can control you. It's too close for comfort. Put on your brake lights. You're in the city of wonder. Ain't going to play nice. Watch out. You might go under. Better think twice. Your train of thought will be altered. So if you must falter, be wise. Your mind's in Disturbia. It's like darkness is light. Disturbia Am I scaring you tonight? Disturbia ain't used to what you like. Disturbia, disturbia. What does she mean by that? She's talking about a spiritual entity coming to her at night. That's what she's talking about. That's what gives her power. That's what gives her influence. What do you, where do you think that these high-level spirits, these old ones, would go to? When Crowley has taught this, and it's a part of rock music, it's a part of rap music, it's a part of heavy metal music. It's a part of death metal music, obviously. Uh, it's, it's, a part, it's a part of country music. It's a part of all of them. They will show their hand and show that all-seeing eye on their materials. They will do signs like the, the Illuminati sign where they bring their hands together. I'm not going to do it, but they bring their hands together like a triangle and they do it. You will see that sign everywhere in their clothing. Why? Because they are advertising for how they got their power. Now, take it to another level and understand this. There are young children that were groomed like Michael Jackson from being virgin boys and girls, young children that become extremely famous and they talk about their molestation. They talk about things that happened to them. They talk about the fact that they were groomed from a young age to be superstars. And then you find near these people like Michael Jackson, you find Crowley magic, you find the all-seeing eye, you find the Illuminati stuff, you find all of those things mingled in with these same people. Think about Michael Jackson and that Macaulay Culkin who was that Home Alone kid that was going to be a huge star. What did Michael Jackson do to him? Zapped his power. That kid never went anywhere after that. How about the other two kids that were that were in Hollywood that were young kids like that too? Corey Feldman and Corey, uh, uh, the other kid. I can't think of his name. Bain, I think his name was. Those, those two kids, same thing, same example, talked about the same things. This other young girl, this other young girl superstar, music superstar or actress the other day. I, I wish I, I should have had Nate send me this. But um, uh, just the other day, she talked about how, how her father uh, abused her. And then she said, well, it didn't really happen. It was just a microchip that he allowed to put in my brain. And they have her in a psych ward right now. Why do all these young children talk about this? Why do you see people like Britney Spears, who was trained from a young child, sing songs like I'm not that innocent and then turns like a dime, shaves her head, goes crazy? Where'd they, whoa, wait a minute. All the Christina Aguilera, all of them. Why do they turn out? The, wait a minute. Where were they all at? Oh, they were Mouseketeers. Wait, wait a minute. Are you saying there's a connection between these devils, Walt Disney, pimping out their daughters, all these young girls that were pure and innocent, and then all of a sudden they're not that innocent and they're turned into the greatest fornicating symbols of all mankind and they are abused and they abuse themselves in front of men and they do seductively wicked things in front of men and they are more popular and have more sway and more power. Why? Because of these devils. That's why. And because they practiced these invoking spirits and they practiced all this and they got their power locked in. And what do these children do? They're trained to crave that attention. So they stand up in front of people and the only time they're happy is when people are clapping and when people love them because that's acceptance to them and somebody actually loves them and cares for them and appreciates them. But that's not love. It's not love, but they're deceived by the devil and they are locked into that stuff. And you, you, some of you people look at Britney Spears and you're like, oh, she's just a dirty, trashy one. That girl was abused from the time that she was a child and she was used of the devil. All those girls were. When you see them on Walt Disney and all those things, all of them were completely abused by those spirits. And they used them for spirits and everything. They used them for invoking spirits, and they were possessed, and they were de dealt that way, and they were become popular because they sold their soul. And that's why you see them popular from, from this age all the way up.
You ought to pity those people and pray for them. Because they are, Satan, they are under Satan's grip of delusion. They're not just girls that decided they want to be prostitutes. Their parents did that to them. They took them and did that to them. They sold them off to the devil at a young age. You think that, do you think that Britney Spears, do you think those girls know what they're doing? Do you think they really know, like, like understand what's, they, that's, you, you're thinking from your perspective. You're not thinking for somebody that has been devil possessed and dealt with and, 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 and molested and abused. That's where they are. That's what happened to them. Every single one of them, down to Michael Jackson was the same way. He didn't have a chance, man. His father took him and had him abused at a young age to get power. And those old Hollywood stars like that pervert Bob Hope and all of them that everybody thinks, is, and that uh, Ed Sullivan and all those people think they're good men. They aren't good men. They're the trashiest, wicked devils you could ever imagine. And they did what they did to get power and authority and a great seat. And those spirits inside of them love it. And when they're done with them, they die like people like Marilyn Monroe and all the others. When these rock stars are done, when the devil's done with them, they die at young ages. Abused, and tormented. They know it. They're deceived by it, though. That's why you see these girls, they seemingly don't do anything really like outlandish until they turn 18. And then it's like Britney Spears was the same way when she was 17, 18. All of a sudden she did all these innocent little kitty things. And all of a sudden it was like she turned into this massive prostitute overnight and came out with a breakthrough song, I'm Not That Innocent. I remember it. I, I'm just telling you, I remember what happened. And the same thing happened with Miley Cyrus. She was Hannah Montana. But what'd she do on the VMA Awards? A satanic, masonic ceremony is what happened. Full of devils and spirits. And what did she do? She was breaking out. So she had to act like the biggest tramp that you've ever seen in your life. And I mean, the checkered outfit, the whole, the whole thing was set up. They come out with Baphomet outfits and everything else on these things. These are devils. God's people have no business supporting any of that garbage. If you got those things in your home, you better burn them. You better get them. If you know somebody's got, you better tell them you better burn this devilish garbage. This is all being entertained by devils. That's what it all is. That's what it is. It's all devilish entertainment. It's all driven by devils. These people are possessed by these devils, and they do the work of their devils. And they, they put it all in their writings. I mean, I, I, can't, I don't have time to cover all the lyrics that I could give you, but I guarantee you, I will dare you to prove me differently. I hope you can. Because let's go through them all. And let me show you that, that, that these people, you can't dig through the trash trying to find somebody that's decent in that business because they're not. Because they're told by the OTO, either you will submit and take the contract or you're going to be gone. We'll frame you, we'll set you up, you'll go to prison or you'll die. That's Aleister Crowley's fraternal order, the OTO. You thought they got famous by just their talent? No. No. They work for Satan, and they're deceived in being deceived. And they pick these children at young ages, and they torture and abuse them. And they do their ritualistic magic with them. And they invoke spirits with them. And then... When they're done with them, they die. You tell me how somebody that Miley Cyrus's father, Billy Ray Cyrus, old pervert, achy, breaky heart pervert, wrote that song back in, some of you don't even know what that is, good. But he wrote that song, achy, breaky heart. You know, he wasn't very popular. What did he do? He groomed his daughter to be, though. Then he wonders why. He said, he said, I, I, can't, he said I can't control my daughter anymore. I don't know why she's running around doing all this stuff. I can't control her anymore because when she turned 18, what happened? The handlers took completely over and pushed him out and said, no, you're done now. But he didn't care because he sold her soul a long time ago. So then what's he do? A couple months ago, I shut off real fast. They said Billy Ray Cyrus was making some kind of a comeback. So I'm like, huh, what's this about? Couldn't watch it. It was so absolutely filthy. 
that, I mean, not that I watched that for entertainment or anything, but I was looking for news there. And uh, no, I wouldn't watch it. I had to shut it off. I just right away cut it off. Why? There's a bunch of perverted stuff going on in there. And here's a guy that says he's worried about his daughter doing all this stuff. When your daughter is half naked on stage, basically fornication on stage and you're doing, and, and, and then you act like you're upset about it. No, you're not upset about it. You liar. You sold her into that garbage. You sold her to the Walt Disney corporation, a bunch of devil possessed, wicked perverts a long time ago. Amen. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. If you are even supporting anything at Disney. You Chris, any Christians that hear this on sermon and all everywhere else, if you're supporting Disney, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. It is wicked. Wicked. God's people need nothing. You know, we're supposed to be children of the light, not children of the dark. We need to stand against this garbage, expose it for what it is, and stand. If you're willing to support Disney, then bunch of pedophile perverts, bunch of devil-possessed pedophile perverts, you need to kick a Mickey and slap Donald Duck in the head. That's what you need to do. Amen. Don't be supporting that garbage. Give them one dollar. Bunch of devils. Bunch of perverted devils. Why? Because they all run with the same spirits. That's why. Disney has Disney has all. I've already covered all that. I'm done. But listen to me. It's because that's where those spirits. Now, what happened? End times. What did he say? Just like in the days of Noah. So where are we at now? Spirits roaming the earth. Hybridization going on everywhere. I mean, we, I've showed you this in a sermon. Go back and listen to my sermon on hybrids. Right here in Minnesota, they put a human heart inside of a pig. Come on, preacher. You're just nuts. They're not doing anything like that. I know. It's just science. We just said they were doing it. I mean, it's not like I made it up. It's not like a Baptist told me or something. Most Baptists don't have a clue anyway about any of this stuff. They don't study any of this stuff. They don't know about any of this stuff. They don't have a clue about what's going on. But it's going on all around you, all this hybridization with food and genetically modified and all this other stuff. They're doing, they're doing it for a reason. Because it's about the DNA, because they're about ready to attack. They're, they're, the, that spirit world is manifesting itself here, but it's doing it in front of all the rock stars, the movie stars, and, everything, and it's already got the hordes. You don't understand, everybody's already worshiping those men. Everybody always already wears the clothes after these men. Everybody always follows these men. All of them are chanting the same chants of these men. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. You have all these people worshiping after Crowley and worshiping that wicked magic, fornicating magic that's out there. They are worshiping it. They are practicing it all right there in front, all to see. But preacher, no, that's not real. Come on, that's just your opinion, isn't it? Aleister Crowley had a few opinions. He turned it into magic and consulted with familiar spirits. And yeah, I don't I think you better wake up and see that this is there's a real battle going on here. Then I had somebody say, Oh, you talk too much about that spiritual warfare. No, I actually fight it. I don't just talk about it. I want you to understand that. I'm actually out there fighting it. I'm not just talking about it, okay, pal? You can sit back on your little laurels and sit back in your little chair and you could you can look at the computer and you can say what you want to, but I'm out there fighting it with these men every week. Because we know the end is coming. Judgment of God is coming. The whole world is deluded and in delusion. And we're seeing that fourth kingdom rising. The end. That's the end game. And they're advertising it every week. And kids are listening to it. They're hypnotized by it. They are consumed with it. And they're taken captive at his will. Father, help us. Help us understand this great truth, Lord. Help us to live it. Help us to warn others about it. Help us to stand firm in these end times. Lord, bless the time we have together at dinner. Bless the afternoon service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.